Welcome to the Medical Device School. Here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com. And I'm again with Eric Volbrecht, and we are talking about economic operators. And today, one question is, um, is it mandatory for distributors, importers, or authorized representatives to have a quality management system? We know that it is mandatory for uh, manufacturers, because it's mainly mentioned also uh, on the MDR. But is it the same for the distributors? Should they have one? Is it mandatory for them? If they don't have, is it a problem, et cetera? So Eric, can you help us on that? Yeah, Monir, uh, uh, I can. Um, the, uh, the MDR is quite, uh, quite clear in uh, the parties that need a quality management system because that's only the manufacturer. Okay. If you look at, uh, if you look at Article 10, it says the manufacturer needs a quality management system, which covers this bunch of aspects. If you look at the, uh, the other economic operators, authorized representative, uh, uh, importer, and distributor, it doesn't say anywhere that they must have a quality management system. So should I trust a distributor if they have no quality management system then? Uh, probably not, because, uh, because, <laughs> because the, uh, uh, what you see in the MDR is that uh, economic operators get a lot of procedural responsibilities. And I think where you start to combine procedural responsibilities that are really about something, and you combine that with a party that says, uh, ah, quality system, humbug, I don't need a quality system then I think you are probably not dealing with a party that takes, uh, takes it as seriously as they should. Actually, this is, this is also discussed in quite a lot of detail in, in an interesting document uh, published by the uh, HPRA, the Irish uh, Competent Authority, Good Distribution Practices for Medical Devices. And in that document, they also say, well, for the activity of distribution of uh, medical devices, you do not need a quality system per se, uh, but these things listed in the document, we consider good distribution practices. This is something that everybody should do. And then if we look at what these good distribution practices are, it would really make a lot of sense for a, pro a distributor that wants to be able to control all these activities adequately to implement uh, an, uh, 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 a quality system to the level of uh, the ISO 13485 uh, 2016. So they can actually also, because that's, that's what a quality system is about. I mean, it's about controlling and demonstrating that you control these procedures. And what you do not want as a, uh, as a manufacturer uh, uh, or, or as an overseeing competent authority is that you have a distributor or an importer that says, I have no idea what happens in my warehouse. Okay. But uh, so it means that it's not mandatory by MDR. It is uh, a good practices uh, for distribution. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, if I have a distributor that says, yes, I have a quality management system, but I, don't, I didn't certify it. I have my procedures. I have my mm -hmm. IT manual. I have some procedures to show, uh, to detect, et cetera. But I, it's not something certified. Should I still uh, think that it's, um, it's a good distributor? Uh, theoretically, yes. But then, uh, then I, would, uh, I, I would want to do an audit on the distributor's procedures and go, look, eh? because... Uh, because under the MDR, there are uh, quite clear uh, criteria for what the distributor must do, for example. And uh, what I would like to see then as a manufacturer for a distributor, I would like to see that at least they implement these things to, in a way that I can be confident about it. Because even though it is their responsibility and not mine as a manufacturer, the situation will always be that if there's a problem with the product because of something that happens at the distributor it will be the name of the manufacturer in the news and not that of the distributor so that's there's your interest as a manufacturer to do this and what you see in practice is also that distribution agreements of manufacturers will address a lot of quality type obligations 
Yeah, and uh, I think just for the audience uh, to understand, uh, when we are talking about a quality management system, we are not just talking about a bunch of procedures that are in a binder that uh, we just say we are certifying our company because we have those documents. It's really a culture, so it's people that have uh, to use that to be compliant and to provide uh, compliant products on the market. Uh, but also it's a guarantee for manufacturers because if there is an issue on the market, they know that there is a procedure existing to uh, address this issue, to contact the right or competitor authority, et cetera, et cetera, that, that it's, it's something that is helping you, that they have also a process for managing uh, problems like CAPA system, et cetera, that yep. it means that they can help you to solve the problem instead of having a company that has no procedure or has a weak procedure just to have some, uh, but at the end they are not using them correctly. So I think, uh, I think it's really important for people to understand that this is not to just have some paper, but really to have a, a really understanding of, of, the, of those systems. Yeah, okay. because a procedure, procedure without procedural awareness and procedural application is, is still nothing. Exactly. And, and, and for example, I, I mean, distributors have the obligations to safeguard storage conditions. Now, let's say that there's an issue with them. There's an incident with a medical device at the hospital because of because it was compromised during storage. What will happen? There's a vigilance report. Root cause is, OK, device was compromised when it arrived at the hospital, but this was not discovered. Then they go up, then they are angry with the hospital because the hospital had bad uh, acceptance procedures. But then they go to the distributor and they say, okay, distributor, how can this happen? And the distributor says, well, we have, yeah, here's our binder with procedures. And then, of course, the next question is going to be yes, and how do you apply it? How do you manage these procedures? And if they say, well, yeah, we just have these papers. Yeah, of course, then, then this is not something you're going to get away with. And, and then a competent authority can say, okay, you're clearly not fit to be a distributor. We close down your company. So be careful. Case. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think it's an important message that even if it's not an obligation to have a quality management system, it's really a guarantee um, that this distributor is really serious and can really help you to distribute correct products on the market. Uh, instead yeah, I, would, I, would, I would add that even if you don't have a quality system, then you need to have a way to demonstrate quality thinking. Exactly, yeah. So uh, it's why even the manufacturers have maybe to audit the distributor and to check that they are doing the job correctly uh, through their procedures. Okay, so great. So thank you, Eric. Uh, don't forget also for people to go to the show notes. Uh, we'll try to put also some, some documents for you to download or some articles to read. And uh, yeah, and don't forget also to put a review on the, on the, on the podcast. It's really important and it's really uh, good for people. And if you don't know somebody that is really interested to understand more about uh, economic operators or MDR or IVDR, so don't hesitate also to share the episode with them. Okay, Eric, so thank you for your help and I wish you a nice day. Thank you, Monir. Bye-bye.